ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय we going to read from brilliant as the sun a retelling of shrimad bhagavatam canto 3 part 2 two avatars reading from chapter 26 at the moment fundamental principles of matter and let's begin we've been reading how lord kapila has been instructing his mother mother devahuti about how the elements the elements they come into being during the primary creation and then giving rise to virat roop the lord's gigantic universal form verses 35 to 37 now up to mm, till now the creation of the god demi gods the subtle elements the gross elements and the working sen uh, of senses and the uh, knowledge acquiring senses how they come into being and the energy of the prana shakti and ahankar how it's manifested and everything has been told so far and now let's begin from verses 35 to 37 now time then acts on ether to generate the touch sensation which is a subtle element or tan matra from touch comes air and tactile organ skin touch is characterized by softness hardness cold and heat the action of air is seen in is seen variously such as when we see tree branches move or fallen leaves collecting together bodily movement and functions require air as does the sense of smell verses 38 to 40 moved by time the interaction of touch and air produces form so moved by time the interaction of touch and air produces the form according to his destiny the living being receives various forms fire evolves from form which is tanmatra or sense object the eye perceives form characterized by color size shape and uniqueness fire is appreciated by its effulgence its power to cook digest food provide warmth evaporate liquids and give rise to hunger and thirst verses 41-43 now by the interaction of fire and form impelled by time taste is produced water produces taste its tanmatra along with the tongue which perceives taste by the presence of water or saliva combining with different substances taste becomes many as astringent sweet bitter pungent sour and salty water is characterized by its ability to moisten or soften to form mixtures such as dough and mud to slack so to slack uh, to slack thirst maintain life drive away heat and constantly supply itself to reservoirs such as wells verses 44 to 46 now influenced by time water interacts with taste to produce the subtle element odor then comes earth and the sense of smell by which the earth's fragrances are perceived although one by contacting different substances odor becomes many such as mixed foul fragrant mild strong etc the characteristics of earth are its ability to model deities construct residences make pots produce bodies of all beings verses 47 to 49 gentle lady let us summarize the elements and their inherent qualities ether stan matra is sound the sense object for hearing that of air is touch the sense object for skin the subtle element of fire is form the sense object for sight that that of water is taste the sense object of the tongue 
Finally, that the matter of earth is order. The object for the sense of smell, you should also know that as one element evolves from the other, the characteristics of the cause exist in the effect. In other words, in air exists sound as well as touch. In fire exists sound, touch and form. In water there is sound, touch, form and taste. And in earth there are all the characteristics as well as the order. They will be quietly reviewed the key points. She had learned Mahavishnu impregnates the Pradhan with time and the living entities along with their destinies. Time instigates the modes of nature to act. Goodness generates consciousness and ignorance produces false ego. When false ego interacts with each of the three modes, it further generates the gods, the mind, the senses and the gross and subtle elements. She wondered how these material elements came together to create the universe. Verses 50 and 51, Kapila said, after the manifestation, the primary elements of creation were unable to combine. Therefore, Garbo Dakshai Vishnu entered each of them. So that's why Garbo Dakshai Vishnu enters each of them, because they were unable to combine. The primary elements, they were unable to combine. They then Coalesced, coalesced to form an unconscious egg within which appeared the Virat Purush. The Supreme Lord's manifestation as a celebrated cosmic being. Devahuti had heard her husband speak of the Virat Purush. It had always confused her. Krishna is spiritual, whereas the universe is material. What sense is he the universe? Seeing her confusion, Kapila explained that since Garbo Dakshai Vishnu is the super soul of the universe, it is considered his body. So I'll repeat that. Garbo Dakshai Vishnu is the super soul of the universe. It is considered his body. Verse 52, Kapila went on, listen to how the Virat Purush developed within the cosmic egg. The universal shell contains the material energy which manifests the universe. It is covered by seven layers, earth, water, fire, air, ether, false soul, ego and mahatattva. Each layer is ten times thicker than the previous one. Then the previous one. Beyond them is the Pradhan. Within this egg, the universal form, which includes the 14 planetary systems, takes shape. Which includes the 14 planetary systems, takes shape. Devamurti asked if there is only one universe, and Kapila explained there are many egg like universes besides this one. This universe is said to be the smallest. So that's an eye opener for all of us. And our universe is the smallest. Verses 53 to 55, Kapila continued his description of the creation. Garbo Dakshai Vishnu, situated in that golden egg, began to create bodily apertures. First, he manifested a mouth from which appeared the power of speech, along with its presiding deity, Agni, god of fire. Then, two nostrils appeared from which came the ability to smell and prana the vital air along with the presiding deity of the nostrils, Vayu the wind god. Then came two eyeballs with the power of sight along with the sun god. After that, this there appeared two ears and the power of hearing with the bigger devtas, gods of the directions. As Devahuti listened in wide-eyed wonder, Kapila continued to describe how the universal form made its appearance, manifesting the template for material bodies, verses 56 to 58. The Virat Purush next manifested his skin, then his hair, moustache and beard, along with a sense of touch, and its presiding deities, the gods controlling herbs and drugs. The genitals and gonads then appeared along with the Varun, 
God of the waters, then came Anus and the organ of excretion, with his presiding deity death, feared by all men, two hands then appeared along with the power of grasping and its deity Indra, two feet and the power of movement followed with the Lord Hari, its deity. Veins appeared along with the blood and the rivers, God. Verses 59 to 61, then appeared an abdomen followed by hunger and thirst and in their wake came Samudra, the ocean deity. A heart then appeared along with the mind and its presiding deity Chandra, god of the moon. Intelligence next appeared with the deity Brahma. Then came false ego followed by Shiva and after this appeared consciousness along with Lord Vasudev. The heart is the seat of these last four manifestations. False ego, conscious, mind, abdomen and heart. Then the verses 62 to 70, when the cosmic being initially appeared, he was asleep. One at a time, each god entered his respective department and tried to arouse to rouse him. First, Agni entered his mouth along with the speech, then Vayu entered his nostrils with the sense of smell. After this, Sun God entered his eyes along with the sight, and then Dig Devtas entered his ears with the sense of hearing. The deities presiding over herbs entered his skin with it with the hair and the sense of touch. Varun entered his gonads along with the power of procreation. Then death entered his anus with the organ of defecation. After which Indra entered his hands with grasping power. Vishnu entered his feet with movement. And the rivers entered the Virat Purusha's veins with blood and the power of circulation. The ocean entered his abdomen with the hunger and thirst and then Chandra entered his heart with the mind. Brahma and Shiva also entered the heart along with the intelligence and ego. However, the Brahma and Shiva also entered the heart along with the intelligence and ego. However, the cosmic being remained asleep throughout only when Lord Vasudev, the soul of the souls, along with his consciousness entered his heart did he come to life and rise from the causal waters verse 71 mother there is a practical lesson we can learn from sankhya philosophy's explanation of the creation just as the cosmic being could not be aroused without krishna's help similarly the individual living beings cannot awaken without his assistance do you mean from sleep or from their forgetfulness of the real spiritual nature both these types of waking depend on Krishna's mercy. So every morning when we wake up, it's always Krishna's mercy. And when our conscious, when, when we rise from the forgetfulness of our spiritual nature, that is also Krishna's mercy. So these, these are causeless mercies. Devahuti looked out across the shimmering waters of the Bindu Sarovar. She longed to wake up from her conditioned existence which had become such a source of pain. How could she petition Krishna's grace? Verse 72, Kapila said, Mother, you must hear about glory and you must hear about glorify and remember Krishna with focused determination. By doing so, you will develop an attraction for him, becoming materially detached and cultivate advanced spiritual knowledge. These three qualities will help you to always meditate on the Lord who is simultaneously in your heart and outside of you and thereby attract his full mercy. It was noon and Devahuti was tiring. She asked her son if they could adjourn for a while and he agreed. I will take my midday bath and chant my prayers. He says, please rest and refresh yourself and I will return shortly. I suggest we resume in the palace 
out of the afternoon sun. After Papilla had left, Devahuti told the girls to gather everything up. Let us go back at once and prepare for my son's return. Once back in Kardam's opulent mansion, she instructed her maid servants to prepare an elevated seat for Kapila and a lower seat for herself. As the Gandharva girls prepared to receive Kapila, Devahuti ate a light lunch with Meta, Kshama and Rangini. After lunch, they discussed the morning's conversation while a couple of maidens gently massaged her shoulders and legs. Devahuti said, did you all understand what the Lord said? Kshama replied, I had some confusions. Devahuti and Kadik Shema to, sorry, I've been reading Kshama. It's, yeah, it is Kshama, I think. Yeah, the A has become E here. To express her doubts, well, mistress, Lord Kapila said that the material world was Krishna's pastime. This baffled me. I thought he had no interest in this world. Oh, such a nice question. My husband once told me that Krishna has no attraction to material sense enjoyment. Krishna's pastime is to bring us home to him by rectifying us of the tendency to enjoy separately from him. Rangini frowned. Now I am even more confused. Krishna sends us to this world to suffer so we can then return to him. I think I understand, said Kshama, as we discussed this morning, we want, said Kshama, as we discussed this morning, we want to enjoy separately from God, but he is the only true enjoyer or Purusha. Isn't that what you were saying earlier, Medha? Medha nodded, yes, we were Im imitating him as enjoyers. We want to take his place and so he gives us this world. Kardam called it a prison house said Devahuti, the government would rather not build prisons. They would prefer everyone to live peacefully together, but there are always criminals ready to exploit and harm others, and thus there are jails. Rangini looked downcast. How can we change? Devahuti said. Kapila is educating the process of Bhakti Yoga or hearing about Krishna. Discussing his glories, remembering him and in the association of his pure devotees. Rangini, Medha and Kshama slowly nodded their heads. It was becoming clearer to them. Then Kshama asked another question. The Lord also said that we are not the doers. That we are impelled to act by the modes of nature. So why do we suffer karmic consequences? Medha replied, it's true the modes of nature are doing everything but we are responsible for what happens because it's our desire that instigates activities. So yes, we think that we are the doers of things, our desires from many many lives, they instigate the activities what we are doing and that's all uh, being facilitated by Lord. So actually we are not the doers, we are not the enjoyers, we are just passing our time in this un universe because it's uh, the prison house for us and Lord is uh, fulfilling all our desires. So if our desires are not conducive for going back home, we'll be coming back here again and again over and over but if we have understood the reason for our existence on this uh, material universe material platform then we can dovetail our desires for bhakti yoga and speed our journey to back to godhead her four friends nodded approvingly that made sense to him then kshama asked another question the lord said that the consciousness enters the cosmic being after false ego should that not be the other way around how can there be ego without consciousness Another intelligent question, said Devahuti, you were really listening well. I was thinking about that, said Medha. False ego is one of the Lord's energies which induces one to think he is something he is not. It enters the cosmic being before consciousness in order to immediately contaminate consciousness with ignorance. Wonderful, said Devahuti. I also wanted to mention something I realized when the Lord described how sound indicates as 
unseen speaker, I believe that as well as the obvious meaning, Kapila was alluding to Vedic knowledge, the original sound vibration, which had as its first speaker the Lord himself who instructed even the great creator Brahma. Oh, very nice, said Veda. In other words, even though we cannot see Krishna, we can nevertheless understand his existence as the origin of the divine Vedas. Exactly, said Devahuti. Just then another young maiden entered the room and curtsied. Mistress Devahuti, your son is approaching. Devahuti and her friends rose quickly, hurrying to greet Kapila. They were eager to learn more. So we will continue next time from chapter 27, Understanding Material Nature. These chapters are making giving us so much clarity in our thought process because if we were just reading the purports we might be still a little bit wondering where we are but thanks to the to the beautiful discussions and the way it has been the Shrimad Bhagavatam has been retold it has made made the understandings so easy to grasp and to retain so we'll continue next time with chapter 27 understanding the material nature thank you for joining Haryom Tatsat and Hare Krishna